All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire at Home. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience broadcast. This is what we call Spirit of Fire at Home, where we just go through the Word of God and we study the Word of God on different topics and subjects. And we just want to welcome everybody in tonight. Listen, I want you to do this. I want you to go ahead and share with people right now. Go ahead and click your likes, depending on which platform that you're on, streaming platform, um, social media platform. Um, for those that are on Facebook, go ahead and share this with someone now. Um, also on YouTube, if you're able to do so, we want you to share it. We want you to go ahead and for those that have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, we want you to subscribe to it. Click the likes, click the subscribe button, and also the notifications button so that you can be alert of any ma material or content that we upload. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. We're going to get started tonight. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. We thank you that revelation, knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you, Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me, all of you. We pray for the wisdom of God. We pray that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. And Father, we just thank you for it. We thank you. We give you praise. Now, Father, we thank you that we stir up the gift of God that's in us. We stir up your spirit, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you as the teacher, as the comforter, as the miracle worker here with us. Thank you for a great refreshing tonight. Thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles that will take place in the mighty name of Jesus. And that we study to show ourselves approved unto you workmen who need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we thank you for freedom. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken, and nothing lacking. We give you praise in advance, and we continuously stay in faith and release our faith for the divine, the supernatural to take place for signs, wonders, and miracles. Father, your word, your, you declare to us by your spirit that this is the year of acceleration, the year of the catch-up. And Father, we are not letting go of that word. We trust that word, and we believe that word. And so, Father, we thank you right now for the spirit of might even being released to assist your people to get the job done. We thank you for the gift of faith as well. That, Father, supernaturally that you're infusing us and that you're assisting us in our believing to get the job done. And we give you glory and we give you praise for it now in Jesus' name. We declare that all is well with us. All is well. And we walk by faith and not by sight. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you. And we covet the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation and demonstration. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. Uh, we've been doing, um, we started doing the, the recovery series, and then we've gone into dealing with um, the believer's authority. Um, and, and in doing this, we're still in alignment with this recovery, understanding that God wants us to recover all, that he wants us to accomplish and achieve everything that we've been created by him to achieve and accomplish. I believe Jesus is coming soon. And so part of our job, part of my job is to teach people who they are, their authority, the rights and privileges as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ, helping them to pursue their purpose and to ignite a passion and fire for the kingdom of God. In other words, being stirred up to do it God's way and to get God's results. And so we're going to have to be pinpoint and accurate. You're going to have to understand your identity. You're going to need to know your authority to walk this thing out and for us to begin to see the full blown manifestation um, of God's promises coming to pass in our life. And so, you know, no matter whether it's been two years, three years, four years, five years that you've been introduced to the promises of God, you've been introduced to the word of God. Number one, we got to make sure that we go back and make sure that no matter what we do, that we keep Jesus the main thing, that we keep our relationship with him uh, intact. Uh, we know and let me say another word, uh, fellowship as well, because as a believer, we're in relationship with them through the blood of Jesus, through our faith in Christ. 
But then sometimes if we don't watch it, we can lose fellowship but by not spending time with him, spending time in his word. So that's going to be vitally important for us to remain connected with him. Um, don't get so caught up in the gifts of the spirit that we fail to develop the fruit of the spirit. So that's going to be very, you know, that should be on the forefront of our thinking. That Father, I want to, I want to conform to your word. I want to be conformed into the image of Christ, the likeness of Christ. And so even as Jesus is, the Bible says, so are we here in the earth. And so we want to make sure that we're developing ourselves in different areas and different aspects. And so right now we're dealing with our kingdom authority as a believer on Jesus. What is this authority that I could walk in that I can expect? Because Jesus even said that greater works will we do um, than he did. And so we begin to look at those works that he did and begin to see that, wait a minute, we can walk in the same authority that Jesus walked in. And so last week, I believe on Sunday, I was dealing with um, the prayers of Paul. I think I kind of got stuck there because as we started just going through it and pulling out different aspects of it, we got to um, be mindful that, hey, we can pray just like Paul prayed. And when you begin to pray these prayers on a consistent basis, you should see something happen within you and also an exposure. And I believe that the, the, the more you pray these prayers and put yourself in them, put your name in it, that, you know, ceasing not to give thanks even for yourself and for your life and that God will open up the eyes of your understanding and that the revelation and wisdom of God will hit your life and that you'll begin to see things that you never saw before, hear things you never heard before, and that wisdom will begin to flow out of you. And so even as I begin, and let me share this, even as I begin to speak, even, even as I begin to minister some more on this topic, we, you know, we want to go, you know, this is designed to go kind of line upon line, precept upon precept to really break it down and to get it in you because he did tell me to teach you. And so as I'm receiving it from him, I'm going to release what I'm receiving. And so sometimes, and I just want to share this, this is just how I flow a lot of times that as I'm preaching, sometimes I may pray in the spirit a little bit and then share something. And so if I'm prompted to do that while I'm in that flow of teaching and ministering, that's the Holy Spirit releasing something. I'm releasing something out of my spirit and then bringing the unction or the utterance of that thing or now the translation of that thing um, that's coming out because he's trying to get something to us and he's trying to get this word in us. So let's go ahead. And I want to start here in um, Ephesians 6 uh, and 12. And I'm going to start here tonight, Ephesians 6 and 12. And it says this, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high or heavenly places. And so we understand that even though we wrestle against them, we have authority over them. Excuse me. So now it says this authority is for every believer, every Christian, that even though that there are unseen forces at work, that just because you can't see them does not mean that they don't exist. And so many times we're focused on the flesh and blood that we don't attack the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, uh, the spiritual wickedness in these heavenly or high places. And so sometimes because we're going and attacking the person because we, that's all that we see. And so whatever is in front of us, our five physical senses, we have a tendency to sometimes focus more on that than on the unseen realm. And so we got to be mindful that, wait a minute, even though we have flesh and blood and we interact with people who are made of flesh and blood, that we got to understand that sometimes what's happening now is that individual that may be speaking against you, that individual that's moving against you, um, that situation that's coming up trying to stop you, that that can be the enemy using an individual to shut down your purpose, shut down your destiny, try to disrupt or distract you while you're moving in purpose. One thing when you're moving in purpose, that there will be things that try to come up to always distract you and to get you off course. So you got to recognize who you are, whose you are, the authority. And then once you become acquainted, this is the Bible even talks about know the wiles of the devil, know his schemes, know how he works against you. If you look at your life, you'll see a track record of the way that things have popped up in your life that try to get you from moving forward. And if you even study that, you will even begin to see some future things that he tries to bring to you. You know your weak spots. You know your weak areas. And so if you understand your weak areas, it's now our job to now say, okay, let's build up in these weak areas of our lives 
because we understand if you don't build up or close a door, then you leave things open for Satan to come in, whether it's through temptations, whether it's through an appetite that needs to be uh, quenched um, or brought under control, maybe walking in lasciviousness or no control. It's like you can't find the breaks. That's where temperance comes in. That's the fruit of the spirit. Temperance or self-control. No matter how big you get, how small you are, no matter what stage in life you're in right now, you're going to need self-control. We all need self-control. And there may be an area that, that that place where you haven't brought it under subjection to the authority of the obedience of Christ that that's the area that Satan always tries to come in to shut down the plan of God for your life. And so now it's a thing where God said it's time to seal it and close it forever. So if that little seal is, you know, no matter, depending on the size, depends on the size of the thing that comes through. You know, sometimes in the past um, years ago, I remember um, we were staying in a place and a mouse came in and it's like, OK, the first thing we tried to see, and I remember seeing the mouse go back out the hole that it came in. And so it's like, OK, that's the access point. So then I took this stuff, this foam stuff and sprayed it there so that it couldn't come back through what it what it came in. So it's like, OK, if you find those cracks or crevices, whenever something enters in that does not belong, you always try to find the entrance point and find the place where this thing gained access into your life. And so if you find a place where it gains access and then find out why, even your why behind it, then you can begin to shut down and come against these things. So we want to deal with some of that tonight, even casting down those imaginations and those images that start the process of you even going into that area. And so this is one of the things that we recognize that there, there are spiritual forces at work trying to stop you and trying to stop us in any way, shape, fashion. But wait, wait a minute. We have authority over all the power of the enemy. And the Bible says nothing shall by any means hurt us. So we have authority over it. Remember, we've already, according to Ephesians um, 2, that we've been seated above, far above. That's the thing, far above all of these principalities and powers. So you are seated far above what's even trying to come at you. From a spiritual position, yes, I understand physically you're here on this planet, but from a spiritual perspective where authority resides and where authority is, you are seated far above. So stop, you know, and I, I don't want to always, you know, be dogmatic about certain things, but sometimes we got to think about things that we say, little phrases. You ever heard somebody saying, well, under the circumstances, or I feel under the weather, I feel this. So these little things sometimes that we don't realize play tricks on our mind to get us to stay submitted to something we're seated above. You, you, you hear what I'm saying? So to you, it may be a thing where, well, well, I'm just saying this. I'm just saying this. But what you're doing is conditioning yourself to remain beneath when we're called to rise far above. OK, Lord. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to be aggressive. We want to be systematic. We want to be intentional about how we're building our lives, what it is that we're doing, what it is that we're studying to grow ourselves in this thing, because we need to understand this authority, because when it's time for you to walk in it, you don't have to come running looking for pastor that now you can de you the same authority God gave me. He's given you the same authority. He's given your favorite preacher, your favorite teacher. He's given you as a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have the same right to walk in authority or take authority over it. I'm sorry, that's what the Bible teaches us. Yes, he's given us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So yes, he's given us special gifts and abilities to teach the people so that you recognize, hey, as we teach the body, that the body rises up strong. I don't care if it's a five-year-old, 10-year-old child who knows who Jesus is, has the same authority as a 90-year-old who's been walking with Jesus all their life. The same authority. But now what it is, we're growing in that authority by the understanding in which and recognizing that, wait a minute, 
My pastor always said like this, renew your mind and release from your spirit. It's already there. We already have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. They're in heavenly places, but now we are learning how to draw this stuff up. Now we got to be intentional about drawing it up. And there'll be times that your flesh tries to get weak and it tries, it wants to get weary. And you know, we got to condition ourselves. And one of the biggest things now is that we're also going to have to walk in a level of health um, it's going to be your, your spiritual, not just spiritual health, but I'm talking about physical health because the physical can draw on the spirit. And sometimes you begin to wear yourself down. And when the anointing shows up and the power of God shows up and you're in intercession and you're in prayer and the regimen of your life that you may need to get this thing accomplished, God is going to strengthen you to get it done. And so now you're going to have to be very mindful about what you eat, mindful about how you rest, mindful about how you exercise, because your house, the, 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 your body, which is the house that the real you, your spirit lives in, carries you around to get this assignment done. So if Satan, watch it, that's why it says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And the flesh, we've come to understand, is not just the physical body, but it's a mindset that opposes the will and the word of God and the way of God. So now God wants us strengthened mentally. He wants us strengthened spiritually. He wants us strengthened physically as well. And so that has to be intentional. There has to be, I, I so want to start saying this stuff. You know, I think I'm going to go ahead and say it. You know, a lot of times I try to hold it, um, you know, the word of the year and, and things of that nature. But it's just kind of at this point, it's like, okay, we just going to flow into this thing. Try to make it a big production. Like, okay, here's the word. God is saying this. There's going to be strategies, structures, and systems you're going to have to walk in. And this is going to be a time of strategy, structure, and systems. There's too much hit and miss. We talking about being intentional in the spirit, strategic in the spirit, but also in the natural to get certain things done. That means setting the alarm clock to get up at a certain time or structuring your schedule to say, I'm a structure time with God. I'm a structure time getting this assignment done. I'm a structure time getting this project done. And so we're going to have to work on this because Satan will use this. Satan will use procrastination to kill you. He'll use it to kill you. He'll say, keep putting it off. It's okay. That's not going to bother you. Eat one more. Don't go to bed early. Stay up as late as you want to. Only take two hours of sleep and it's wearing your body down. And see, not even realizing the long-term effects, God will give you wisdom. And so things like, okay, I've been buying this. Well, it's, this is diet, but it's still carbonated drink. Just because it takes the sugar out, don't forget the other effects of the thing that's in it. You better, I'm telling you now, this is what I've been seeing and what I've been sensing and picking up is like, don't, don't be smart about how you conduct your life. Be smart as to how you do things, how you move, how you maneuver. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Walking in love towards people, but walking in love also means speaking the truth, but speaking it in love. And so sometimes speaking the truth may mean, you know, you're going to have to be confrontational in these last days, things you've been holding in and holding back, knowing you need to address in your life or address in relationships, but it has to be done for progress and breakthrough to take place. Some of you have said that you've forgiven. No, you haven't. You've just covered up the hurt, but it's still there. You've harbored it on the inside of you. And now what you've done is perfected phoniness because you never really dealt with the heart of the matter or the issue, you know, the issues of life. See, that's why he says, guard your heart for out of it flows the issues, the forces of life, the power of life. Your spirit is your reproduction center, is your production center. Everything, glory to God, flows out of us. That now as it flows out of us, we begin to manifest it in this earth. We flow in this power. I mean, the anointing, the power of God is supposed to manifest. It's supposed to flow. Creativity, ideas. God wants to blow our minds with creativity. He wants our brain capacity to increase. He wants everything that's in us, man, to flow out. Man, I didn't realize I was going to go into this vein, but <laughs> this is good. He wants us to begin to establish things. There is creativity, witty inventions, ideas, concepts, insight that he wants to get done. And it is time to write the book. 
It is time to create the thing. It is time to bring out of you what's been in deposit so it can feed you now. You've been struggling long enough and God wants you to live life in abundance to the full till it overflows. And you've walked this Christian life and you've done good things and good deeds for people, but you have not seen the fulfillment or the fullness of the words you've been hearing. And this is the time to manifest God's goodness. But he says, never forget that you walk in character, integrity, honesty, discipline, and diligence, which will be the bedrock of your life. These fruits of the spirit, still being gentle, still being kind, still walking in love, still walking in temperance, still controlling your attitude, still controlling your body, still not putting yourself in situations where you will sin. Yes, we have the righteousness of God. Yes, the grace of God has been manifested, but grace will help you, help strengthen you to stay out of stuff. The love of God constrains us because we love God and we know he loves us. That now is going we're going to keep that on the forefront. And now, God, I won't do this because now I know that thing will hinder the kingdom of God from functioning in my life. And so functioning in the works of the flesh, he says, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. So now it'll disrupt. It, don't, it didn't talk about the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't mean that you're not going to heaven. It just means it may, it'll be things in your life that'll disrupt what takes place. Now, we still got to be mindful because we don't want to get in a place where we're comfortable in doing things that we know don't please God. We know that they aren't productive to us. We know that it doesn't, it's not healthy for us. And so he says this, I want you to begin to do this thing. I want you to begin to walk in this boldness, walk in this comfort, Walk in this grace. So as, as I shared that now, that was a word. That was a word that was kind of wrapped up in a little teaching there. But that was part of that was a prophetic utterance, a prophetic word, a word of just remembrance and reminding that God says, I want you to stir you up. So even if something as simple as just getting up, taking a brisk walk in the morning for 15 minutes or doing something or saying, I'm not going to eat past this time. There's something about this, the health, the, the, the physical health to start reversing. Some of you say, well, I've been doing this all this time, so ain't no use in changing now. No, don't be like that. Don't disobey the word that God is saying just because you want to hold on to something you've been doing all along. So, and I understand it's discipline. Discipline, discipline is not pleasant to the flesh. Discipline ain't pleasant. See, discipline, ooh, Oh, that's good. I, oh, man, I might have to write this down. Discipline is the it enemy of disobedience. Discipline will help you stay on track when motivation leaves you. Discipline keeps you to say, OK, no, I know I was stirred up when I first heard this. I was convicted when I first heard this. But now I'm going to set disciplines to keep me on that track of what I was motivated to do back then. Discipline helps me to stay the course. That I was like, nope, even if I don't feel like it, I have to do it because I understand the benefits of it. And then a lot of times in certain cases, discipline can turn into delight. Discipline can turn into delight where you may not like doing it in the beginning, but now you get in the habit or the rhythm. You like the results of being disciplined. And then all of a sudden now you begin to see, OK, I, I can do this. I, I know I can do this. But now that that means also the discipline of confession. The discipline of fueling your spirit and your mind to enforce that obedience to say, OK, I declare that I am the body of Christ and Satan has no power over me for I overcome evil with good. And so what I'm doing when I'm speaking that I'm reminding myself, I'm reminding my body, I'm reminding my mind. I'm saying, no, uh, -uh this is how I'm going to walk. Satan doesn't want you doing that because when you open up your mouth to speak, what I'm talking about now is even exercising this authority. That when you open up your mouth to speak and come against the thing that's trying to tempt you or woo you or entice you, that now the grip of it begins to loosen off of you because now you're exercising your authority. And so the thing that was tempting you has to flee and leave because you're submitting to the authority of God Almighty and now you're resisting the devil and he got to flee. You're resisting whatever is under his jurisdiction. That means the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness, that whatever is tempting you and wooing you to do the thing, when you open up your mouth, that, that desire dissipates and really the force behind it leaves, whatever it is. Now, what happens is when you're consistently doing that, you develop now new character. That's the new character now, the new habit, the new action. 
See, the new decisions, all of those things is changing your thinking now. And so whatever it is, you can begin to reprogram yourself to start rewiring your brain to start thinking new thoughts and doing new things. Um, I, I, I don't want to say this. I, I done said it before in the past, but it's like, you know what? Instead of, <laughs> I ain't going to speak nothing against anybody else that's doing something. I, don't, I never want to do that. I'm just talking about from a world system standpoint where so many people now are taking credit for God's stuff, but not giving him glory for it. I'm, I'm tired of it. It's like, okay, <laughs> you know, and it's like, and I get it. My thing is the people, it still helps people. But a lot of times what's happening now is people are now dealing more with self-help type things, using God's strategies, his tactics, his principles, but don't give him glory for it, has a tendency to have people now proclaim themselves as God or proclaim others idols as God versus the true and the living God. So always be mindful of that. Um, I want to let's go here. Um, we talked about Ephesians 1 and 18 and Paul mentioned um, so far as that the eyes of your understanding that they be enlightened so that you may know the hope of his calling. And so Paul mentioned that God hath blessed us in Ephesians 1 and 3. And so God blessed, he said, blessed be the God of our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, past tense, blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So the blessing, he has blessed us already. He has blessed us. He hath, hath, hath. He's already done it. It's already a done deal. I need you to say this. I have the blessing. I have the blessing. I have, I am blessed with, and this is something you got to speak. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And now in the name of Jesus, I declare that they are manifesting in my life in this physical realm. I speak it now into existence. I declare and decree in the authority of the name of Jesus that I do these things. And so I declare that all things are working together for my good. Pause here real quick. Go to um, go to go to uh, Romans eight. Go to Romans eight real quick. I want to pause here for a second. I want this something that just kind of came up, and I'm gonna read this. Uh, I'm a, and this is gonna be good. I want you to. I may stay here for a minute for the. I don't know if I be for the remainder of the time that we have, but I want to do this. I want to read it to you. Um, Romans eight twenty six. Uh, no, let's start in twenty five. Um, Romans eight twenty five. Now this is talking about the Holy Spirit in prayer and praying in the Spirit. Okay, and I and I'll I'll get to what I want to get to. Watch this verse twenty five, and it says, "But if we hope for what is still unseen by us, we wait for it with patience and composure." Now, now let's, let, me just, let me just stop there. Now, I know I'm, I didn't read everything in, in, you know, before. But now when we talk about hope, hope is an earnest expectation of good. But now the Bible declares that now faith is the substance of the thing that we hope for. Now faith um, it's the evidence of the thing we can't see. It, it's, it's the confirmation. It's the title deed. It's the thing that says, OK, what I'm hoping for, I believe I receive it now, but based off of what God's word says, because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. And so if I realize that um, I have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, and I understand as the will of God is in heaven, so shall it be here on the earth, then I realize it's his will for me to manifest these blessings. And then too, in Galatians, it talks about even though you're an heir, but you act like a child, you know different from a servant. Because now you haven't matured to take on the responsibility of everything that's available to you. Because as a child, you will squander your inheritance, even in the natural. So that's why even in the natural, some people, children, there are certain ages that people say, OK, you have this money in this trust. And, but until you're at a certain age where I feel as though that you can make responsible and wise choices, then all of this is released so that now it doesn't destroy you or you won't squander it, but that you'll use it wisely. So now God wants us to grow in how to function in the kingdom of God, to function in the spirit so we can deal wisely in the affairs of life. So he says in verse 25, let me just come back here. But if we hope for what is still unseen by us, we wait for it with patience and, and composure. So we wait for the thing. We're believing for it. 
not just hoping, but now bringing that thing by faith and saying, we trust and we trust you, God, and we believe this thing in Jesus name. So too, watch this, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weaknesses. He bears us up in our weaknesses. So whatever area is weak in your life, remember that access panel, that access that the enemy may have been coming in, the Holy Spirit bears us up. He comes to our aid. He's a helper to us. He's there. And sometimes he's saying stuff to you, get out of there. Don't go this, don't look at this. Don't go to that place. Hold your money, save this. Don't spend it here. I want you to don't eat that. I want you to go to sleep earlier, drink more water. Go apologize to that person. He's coming to our aid to try to help us get to what it is we're believing for. But if we don't listen to him, then we just see wisdom violated. Wisdom, yeah, violated is chaos created. If we don't, if we don't listen to the wisdom of God, if we don't hear the wisdom of God that comes by the spirit of God, because the Holy Spirit is the one here in the earth with us to guide and direct our lives and to help us get to places that we've been trying to get to. He is the navigation system. And now he'll tell us things and show us things to come and he'll lead us and prompt us to do things. And so now we got to be submitted. So it says, so too, verse 26, So too, the Holy Spirit, so too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weaknesses, for we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought, but the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. So, We may not know what we need to pray for or how we need to pray about a situation sometimes, but the Holy Spirit who abides in us is there to assist, excuse me, to assist us with groanings and yearnings um, too deep for utterance. There there have been some occasions where I know I've personally been there where it's like, okay, I was in a situation and it's like, okay, I don't know what to do. So, okay, Holy Spirit, whenever I'm in that place where I don't know what to do, I know what to do. I know the first thing I need to do, I need to draw up this wisdom. I need to get the Holy Spirit. He's there in deposit. He's on the inside of me. And so Holy Spirit, I need you to help me to pray about this situation. What is it that you want me to do? I'm I'm, I'm encountering uncharted territory, uncharted waters right now. I haven't been this way before. And so he's going to be there to help us and to assist us, to pray through us, for us, and supplicate for us. He's supplicating and pleads on our behalf with unspeakable yearning. So he's praying through us, for us, to the Father, okay, about that situation. And he, verse 27, who searches the hearts of men, knows what is in the mind of the Holy Spirit and what his intent is, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints, according to and in harmony with God's will. So even though in your mind you may have prayed a different way, and this is why, too, we got to understand the word of God, which is his will and rightfully divided so that we can even rightfully know how to pray, even in our understanding, because sometimes you may be praying away about the situation that it is out of alignment to the will and the way of God about that thing. And so now you need the Holy Spirit to help you because if you don't know it in your Noah, then in your understanding, you know that you got a helper to help you pray out that thing until you get understanding of it. You, you hear me? So I'm, 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 I just want to, I want to dig this in you because see, now you got to depend. You know, I, I've had some people, um, I heard somebody one time when I was sharing something and, and they made a statement just kind of jokingly, it was like, yeah, he'll tell you to pray in the spirit about it, pray in the spirit. And so, but the way that they said it, it was like, okay, I know you kind of playing around a little bit, but you better watch what you're saying. Cause now it's almost like it, to me, I almost took it as it was mock. They were mocking what I was saying. And so, because they've heard me say it so many times and I, and I knew then you ain't doing it. Because if you was doing it, you would experience what I'm telling you, you would experience what the word of God says. You just don't want to do it. You're trying to find another way to get it done versus the kingdom of God way versus the way God said to do it. And so now all of a sudden, since you don't you don't get it and it's like, well, I'm not going to get another answer from you. I'll go try to talk to somebody else and see if they can tell me something different that lines up to what I want to do anyway. 
And so I'm telling you, if you don't know how to get it done, tap into the source of the one who knows all things. See, but now that takes discipline. That takes time. That takes time you being quiet, cutting off the TV, getting up early or staying up late, whatever you got to do. Get in your car for lunch while everybody else, I don't care, you know, working from home, whatever it is, I don't, you got to find a way to get into the presence of God and get some answers. Now, I'm here to teach you how to do it, but now you got to do it. Nobody can go before God. Yes, we have intercessors. Yes, there is intercession. But there comes a time you got to do it. If you have the ability to do it, God is expecting and requiring you to do it. Come unto me. All ye that labor are heaven laden, I'll give you rest. Come unto me. Stop worrying about it. You so busy worrying. If you're going to worry and pray, you can't do both. If you're going to worry, worry about it. If you're going to pray, you can't worry. Oh, I'm just concerned. Stop giving different words for the same thing. I know. I've done that stuff too. I'm a little concerned. No, what it is, is it's a little fear that's trying to come in and trying to get you out of confidence and out of rest because now you're so worried about them that you can't even rest. And now you're affected by somebody else's situation. Listen, you can't be God. Okay, whoever that's for. You, you can't be God because it's wearing you out. You can't handle the weight. That's why you're supposed to cast all your care on him, for he cares for you. You weren't designed to carry it. Whatever. Listen, I ain't designed to carry the weight of provision. Now, yes, I have responsibilities to do certain things, but it comes to a point, you'll wear yourself out. Either you're going to trust God or not. If you're going to trust God to do what he told you to do, then he'll reward you for doing what he told you to do. See, the will of God is not automatic, folks. There are many people who've lived and died and never walked in the first phase of what God called them to do. Jesus even spoke this. See, I'm telling you, he spoke this to a man of God when he had a vision and he appeared to him. He says he was talking about even preachers. He was dealing with this particular preacher about um, he was in pastoring for 12 years at that time. And the Lord visited him and says, you're about to enter the first phase of what I called you to do. And what he was doing, he was successful at it. And what the Lord even told him was, listen, I wasn't honoring you during this time. I was honoring my word. The reason why you saw fruitfulness is because I have to honor my word. And because you taught my word and trained the people in my word and demonstrated my word that my word produces. Can you, man, you better hear this. That, is a, that sounds very dangerous. Because we can think we're doing something for God, but he's like, nope, that's not what I told you to do all along. And so you got to be ready. He says, now you're about to enter into this first phase. And then he showed him Now watch this. Oh, Lord. He showed he showed up and told him this. And now he told him to teach us this stuff. But now it's our responsibility to say, OK, God, I want to make sure I'm in your will. And this is the thing now. This is the thing. OK, since I'm here. Because I've heard this before from several people over the years. And and. It's almost like there's a fear of not obeying God or not doing what God wants them to do. There's even a scripture says, whatever you set your hands to do, do it heartedly as unto the Lord. And watch this, because if you haven't heard anything in your spirit, if you haven't really bore witness to exactly what it is, you can still serve God by serving and connecting to what you know he's funding and he's functioning in and he's working in and through and say, okay, God, out of the integrity of my heart, I'm desiring whatever it is. But for some of you, you know what you're supposed to do. But for some, you're still struggling with it until you get to know what it is, at least as you're serving, at least as you're finding out. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna get ready to do a teaching on that, dealing with your purpose. And even talking about your skill sets, your desires, what are the gifts, talents, and abilities he's given you to help you. And I'll get back to that in a second. I want to make sure I finish um, saying what I, what I was teaching here. So even coming back, let me come back, let me come back, let me come back, let me come back. And he says in verse 27 that the Holy Spirit prays for the saints, for us in harmony, in other words, unity with God's will. So whenever you pray in the spirit, you are praying in alignment with God's will. So Holy Spirit, I need you to help me to pray about this situation. 
Um, even in walking your authority, I remember uh, Brother Hagen, one time he was teaching on this, he was ministering deliverance to this lady that went to a room. Um, he was praying in the spirit with some intercessors. He says, let's do this, let's pray for this lady. Yeah, the lady was sick. And I think she was um, in her bed sick and the family member called them over to, to go in and minister to her and to pray for her. And he called a couple other people to go with him to go minister. He said he saw, even in the spirit, he saw them praying or they begin to pray in the spirit. That's what they did. They all begin to pray. Might've been three or four of them begin to pray in the spirit. He says, while they were praying in the spirit, he all of a sudden saw, and this might've been after 20, 15, 20 minutes or so, might've been 30, I don't know exactly. But as they began to pray in the spirit, he saw himself pointing to this lady and commanding her to get up in the name of Jesus. So now they're praying about this situation. They're praying for this lady in the spirit. Now they stayed in the spirit praying, stayed praying in the Holy Ghost until an answer came. Something showed up. And he saw himself, so he commanded this lady, he got up from his position of praying, went to the edge of that bed and, and pointed his finger and commanded her to be healed and to get up in Jesus' name. And this woman was in, instantly healed. And that she was on a deathbed at this time, I believe. And so, I mean, instantly she was healed. But that was by the unction of the Holy Spirit as they began to pray. Then, watch this, he knew what to do to exercise his authority at that moment and exactly what he needed to do. Now, this is interesting here. Could not he have just done that in the beginning, just go and point and say in the name of Jesus, get up. But he stayed in the spirit until he got wisdom from God about that situation, because sometimes we can try to function in something, but it's not spirit led. We are just doing it out of the mechanics of doing it. And so there are times where we need to take a minute to stop and say, okay, Holy Spirit, give me your wisdom on this situation. Show me what to do. And sometimes it may be things where you gather others as intercessors coming together about that situation. Let's pray and get the mind of God on this thing. Let's pray and get the mind of God. I know what the experts say. I know what all of these people have said, but God, is there, there's a higher way. Is there a higher thing that you want to reveal unto us in this way of how we need to handle it, how we need to do it? Because when you get God's permission and backing on something, you're walking in that authority and that, oh man, there's an authority when you've been deputized to do something that's in alignment with God's will. Sometimes what can happen is, you can do what's the will of God for somebody else, but if it's not the will of God for you, you don't have his backing on it. So you're trying to figure out, well, why did it work for them, but it don't work for me? Because he told them to do it. He didn't tell you. Well, if he told them to do it, it was just something that's good to do. But no, he told them to do it. You don't know everything that's, that they had to go through. You don't know their whole situation. You don't know what he's already been working with them about. And so because they did something, and that's why it's dangerous just to be copycats of what everybody is doing. And so you got a bunch of copycat. Well, anyway, you got a bunch of copycats. But now where are the authentic original? And then everybody's waiting for the new this. But what about the person who received the new this? What about what if you became the person who was, who was open to receive the witty invention and the idea and the new concept and the advancement in technology, the advancement in education, the way to bring it all together? Will you begin to sit, man, I, I sense something. Oh, I gotta keep preaching on this line because what it does is gonna stir you up to expect and receive the new, the fresh and the new. And, and, and to take and, and the Holy Spirit will show you how to take what you currently have and how to maximize it and how to multiply it. See, Jesus told the, he told the disciples, hey, that was before they came to the apostles. He says, OK, give me the fish. Give me what we have. He broke it, blessed it and distributed it. Sometimes we got to know how to bless what we currently have instead of complaining about what we have. Bless what we have. Bless what remains. 
Bless what you have and what is it that you currently have? Bless it. Speak over it. What can we do with this, God? How can we maximize this? Okay. Well, I'm telling you, just get, get, get ready for it. Now watch this. Watch this. This is what happens now. This is what happens. He says, as we pray like this, when we pray in the spirit, this goes into verse 28. And a lot of people have pulled verse 28 out of context. Most people have just said, then it says here, we are assured The King James says, and we know that all things will work together for our good, for those that love God, who are called according to his purpose. The Amplified here says, we are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor, all things working together and are fitting into a plan for good to to and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. Whenever we get, now watch this. Oh, I want to lose what I'm just getting. Whenever we do this, he's partnering with us to get it done to fit in his plan. And so sometimes he'll direct us to do things and it's not our plan. That's why when we submit our plans to him and we submit our will to him, his plans will be established and succeed. And so now and I, and some people, and I, I'm so getting tired of people. I always having to put this precursor out there or this, uh, uh, what, what's, what's the word? Um, uh, uh, disclaimer that, okay, I'm not trying to be spooky. I'm not trying to be deep. And I get it because you don't want, you know, some people take things to an extreme, but it's almost like when you're dealing with supernatural things that sometimes people don't function this way because it's not taught as much or they don't hear it as much. And it needs to be taught so people know how to tap in to the creative ability of God. Now watch this. And most people just say, you know what? All things going to work together for good, baby. Everything going to work out together for your good. And that's a good saying. But watch this. 28 was tied to 27, 26, that as we pray like this, all things are working together for our good. Now, let me, let me say this. Sometimes you're waiting on something to turn around, but it's not going to turn around until you turn it around. Until you get up and pray. Until you exercise your authority. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. But now, you loosing of your faith and walking by faith, even when walking in your authority, you can walk in your authority in the spirit and declare a thing and it breaks the heavens open. It, it, when I say breaks the heavens open, yes, we, we live under an open heaven. Jesus, the blessing, he's the one that now we're blessed through Jesus Christ, through faith in Christ, we are blessed according to Galatians. We're blessed with faith for Abraham based off of our faith in Christ. Not anything else we've done, but our faith in Christ has caused this blessing to come upon our lives. Okay. But now you can have an open door, but you got to walk through it. You got to walk through it. Nobody's going to walk through it for you. It's almost like you pray and declare favor, but have you positioned yourself to see what you've been declaring work? Did you go to the meeting? Did you attempt something in that area? When you begin to see favor show up, because sometimes we can, man, we've been confessing the favor confessions for years. This, this is what, 16 years now. But now when you declare it, are you moving in the direction of your confession? That's good. Are you moving in the, 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 the direction of your words? Oh, man, I'm just telling you how I'm seeing it now. It's almost like I'm seeing it like a forest and your words are cutting down trees and cutting down paths. It's cutting down the path so you can move towards it, so you can move forward. So if there are blockages in your life, obstacles trying to stop you, you have authority to speak life. And you can trust that when I pray in the spirit about these situations, that now, and I, I pray till I get this note of victory. What do I mean? That peace on the inside. It's almost like a velvety-like feeling. You know, it's all, there's sometimes I've sensed it like, I can sense that the Bible talks about out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That as I'm praying in the spirit, it, it may get intense. And then I might feel a release, like just, it's just out of me. Whatever it is I've been praying, it's like, and I know it's done. It's taken care of. And so now when we begin to pray, sometimes stay there long enough. Stay there long enough until you get a release. And that's part of your discipline. That's part of your development. Sometimes you will sit, I might sit without music, sometimes with music. Sometimes that music helps me to just kind of stay there and get in a flowing rhythm. 
Sometimes while I'm praying, and just everybody has their own thing, but sometimes there are times while I'm praying, I get to rocking. I, don't, I just start doing it because it's starting to get good to me. I'm just staying there. I'm praying. And, but if we don't walk in that discipline, you'll never see the delight of the manifestation. And I want you to start walking in this because God wants to reveal some things. And watch this. God can do nothing for humanity except the man prays. See, people always say God is in control, but that's not um, completely true. See, God is sovereign, but in his sovereignty, he's given us authority over the works of his hands. Scripture has taught us that, that he gives us authority. And so that's why the earth is, is now in travail. The earth, you know, we're dealing with certain things because men have mismanaged and been bad stewards over God's stuff because he gave us authority. And so now Satan being the God little G of this world system is now working through the minds and the, the, the lives of individuals to acquire and to control media, land, agriculture, med all of this stuff, the medical profession. You know, they're getting, they're getting billions and rich and trillions off of sicknesses of people. And then even from the agricultural standpoint, where pesticides and all of this stuff being put, preservatives that's causing the sicknesses, that's now you going to the doctor to get treated. And it's a cycle. And so now when you start, it's like, wait a minute, God, you did not create the earth and the land and the fruits and the, and the food for us to get sick off of. You caused it for us to be fed and to be healthy and to be strong. So now something sin entered into the earth contaminated now everything. Now watch this. Now this is going to the whole nother thing where you're talking about your authority. When Jesus um, was on the mountain in the pinnacle when, um, when Satan tempted him, when he was in the, the wilderness 40 days and nights, and he showed, Satan showed Jesus all of the kingdoms of the earth. And he says, I'll give you all of this if you bow down and worship me. How could he even do that? If, if he did not have the ability to, to do that, it would not have been a temptation. And that's why Jesus came to reclaim what Adam lost. So that means now Satan has that authority in this earth realm to begin to maneuver and move through people and, and use things to now acquire and to do this. And so now we as the body, watch this, when Jesus came and he led captivity captive, and now we've been elevated to be seated together with Christ in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And so there's a system in this earth where many have called the Babylonian system, where, you know, men are now moving and shaking in the earth. But we as the body of Christ, now we're citizens of heaven and we live on this planet. And now we've been authorized and deputized by God Almighty to now function in this authority as ambassadors not just preaching Jesus to people, but now doing what Jesus did. Jesus preached the kingdom. And now thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Your kingdom, your way. Let, let your laws be manifested. Now, there are certain laws already at work in the earth. And now we as the body of Christ, we take the word of God. We take how we're supposed to increase. We take how we handle sickness and disease. We take how we handle depression, where we cast down images and imaginations and those high thoughts that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of the knowledge of Christ, where people are on antidepressants, where we get the word of God, which is medicine to us. It's life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. The word is more powerful than that pill. Now hear me. I understand that. So I'm not telling you to throw your pills away right now, but it's going to come to a point. It's time to get weaned off of them. It's time to be intentional. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word is life. So let me use this. Now, Father, let me renew my mind and take authority over the spirit of poverty that has been rampant in my life. What is that? The spirit. Am I talking about an actual demonic force? Yes, I believe there are demonic forces that bring poverty in areas and it's a stench to it. You can smell it. There are things called unclean spirits that, that function in certain areas. You smell them, you smell, I'm telling you, I've been to different projects and it's like the same stench in the areas. See, I see, yeah, see, whether you believe it or not, <laughs> so, but in this, watch this, but we got authority over it. 
we can now take the word of God and the blessing of God and take that which is dilapidated and turn into the Garden of Eden. In the sense of, okay, let's turn it into a place that's ruled by the blessing, that's ruled by believers. So now it's like, okay, we're going to do this. And now that means we're going to, what goes with that is not just the prayers, but the strategies, the insight, the wisdom. Even scripture says, it says in Luke, I think in Luke 14, 28, maybe, no man, no king, oh man, I'm over time. No king goes into war without sitting down first and counting the cost, whether he has sufficient. Nehemiah did that in rebuilding the wall. He knew what he needed. He wrote down everything he needed and had papers for every person that he was going to encounter along the way. Okay, what do you need? This is what I need. Boom, now I can help you. He was prepared to answer. He was prepared. So your preparation, it ain't just praying because there are many very spiritual people who don't know how to function in business. So that means that means you got to learn something now. You got to be open to the wisdom and God will use even the laws that are already established in the earth. Watch this and give you the wisdom to know how to work the system that you currently functioning in. You got to see he'll use the, the wisdom of God will bring the things of me and the nothing. I'm serious. He'll tell you what to say in front of people. He'll give you counsel. He'll give you wisdom. And so it's going to be important and vital that we begin to spend some time doing this and be intentional about it and be strategic about it. And not just, this is just a thing of not just having church, but being the church and saying, we need to develop ourselves in these areas. We need to grow in understanding of the word where it comes to our spiritual life, our mental life, our physical life, financial, relational purpose, all of that type of stuff. We need to know how to intentionally do it to see the results. Many have done it. Many have done it. And if there are certain things that certain principles and laws that just work, a law is an established principle that works for anybody who receives or who walks in it. And so we understand the laws of the kingdom and how God's kingdom works that you understand the law of seed, time, and harvest. You understand that the seed is the word of God. You get the faith of God by getting the word of God deposited in your heart that grows you up in that thing, and then you begin to execute it. So let's be intentional. Let's be intentional about growth and development. Let's be intentional about strategies and systems and things put in position in place to help people grow and to develop. And now, too, it's almost like God wants you to develop yourself so that now you can help somebody else. He wants you well. He wants you whole. He wants you at peace. Father, we thank you. We bless you and we give you praise and we give you glory. And we declare that all is well with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I declare the blessing over you. I declare that all is well with you. I declare right now in Jesus' name that things will turn around for your good and for your benefit. In Jesus' name. Now, um... There may be those who've logged on, who've tuned in, and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. I want to just give you an opportunity to get born again. And I want you to make this confession of your faith. The Bible declares that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So he wants you to be saved. He wants you to be born again. He wants you to experience eternal life. You may be a person you don't know. You're not absolutely positively sure that if you were to die today that you'll make it to heaven. Listen, if you've already done this and you've already accepted Christ and you believe that he's the Christ, the son of God, you've already done that, you're born again. You got to be confident. Don't allow Satan to come in and play with your mind and to make you feel like, you know, every week you got to confess it to make sure that it sticks. Listen, trust, believe. That's a believing issue now. That the Bible says, listen, that's what you go by. You don't go by how you feel. Well, I feel saved today and I don't feel saved tomorrow. That ain't got nothing to do with it. Your feelings have nothing to do with it. It's according to the word of God. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, that he died for your sins, he was raised for your justification, raised from the dead, that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. It's that simple. 
Now, after that, we begin to grow in how to function as a Christian. How do we live? How do we move? Have I, have I been? So I just want you to make this prayer. Say this prayer, confession of your faith. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to say this, say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, you're born again. You know it. And I want you to live this life in abundance to the full till it overflows. Now, there may be somebody out there that you've gotten born again. You're born again and you know it, but you've been lacking power in your life. This is an opportunity for you to receive the Holy Spirit. He is the third person of the Godhead. He's not lesser. He's just the one. Watch this. I like how I heard somebody just say it recently. He's the third person that was revealed to us. He was the one revealed to us in the scriptures. Now, he was there in the beginning because it says the spirit of God was hovering. And we see them hovering upon and brooding upon the waters, waiting for the command of God. And now as the father commanded, the Holy Spirit manifested. I like to call him the muscle of God, the power of God, the strength of God. The, man, he brings so much. I mean, you talking about counsel. You talking about wisdom. He'll show you things and he comes with gifts. There are aspects, attributes of him. And so now I want you to just say this, say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now to fill me, to live in me, to dwell in me. And to give me the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me utterance. I declare I have that ability now. In Jesus name. Now. For somebody that may be just re received the Holy Spirit along with everybody else, let's begin to pray in the Spirit just for a few seconds, about 15 seconds or so. Le korama. Pray out things, things that maybe you've been having on your mind. Le breshete korama le brasetene. Le robo shoto kumbra vreshete kana. La ramasete. Now, as you begin to pray, 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 pray. Korama sende no kumbra. La rabashete ruma salamene kane breshete de de bro. Hambre banana brasso corre brusho torre brasse tene brasse brosso con. Hallelujah. See, as you begin to pray, sometimes what happens is as you're praying in the spirit, things can be can be um, coming to your mind. You can get a vision or insight or wisdom, or you get glimpses of things that you're to do. Things coming and you know to your mind to do. Um, sometimes it can be unorthodox instructions. It's just a thing of okay, you drive and he says, you know what, go by the dealership now. And so you find the person like, well, I'm not ready to do it. My score isn't um, up there just yet. And if he tells you to go do it, so you can, see, this is why it's important to get that unction. Just like what David did to recover, he inquired of the Lord. Lord, shall I pursue? Get his wisdom on situations. He'll say, go do this. And this is the danger sometimes. When I say the danger, but when you hear somebody else's testimony, then people try to go and emulate the testimony. But it's like, no, well, that's what God told them to do. That's how they were led to do it. What is it that God's wisdom is telling you to do? One person, he may say, go by the dealership and they go and the people don't even check the credit score. They just give them the car and say, OK, this is what I just feel led to do. Then everybody just go running out to dealerships. Well, that's what he told them to do. So what you want to do is get the wisdom of God for you about your situation. OK, so now when you, when you pray like this, how do I know is God speaking? So we've already dealt with that. I want you to go back. Even when we talked about hearing God, you'll get a prompting or knowing. It's going to, one of the ways is you know it, it, it's going to require faith for you to do it when you're hearing God. It can go against all reasons and rationalities of how you would do certain things. 
it'll bring peace. Now in your head, it might bring a level of, oh Lord, man, you telling me to do this, God? But on the inside, you know that's what he's telling you to do. And so I want you to begin to just follow those things and see what happens is when in, in the beginning stages, when you're following and then you obey what you heard and it's like you see the manifestation, what happens is it builds confidence now and that you're hearing the voice of God and the word of God. And then two, it's good to even have good sound spiritual people around you, um, solid Christians and believers who've had the experience of hearing God. That Sometimes if you need to bounce some things off, of people just to hear and get some counsel, that's okay. But God will show you, he'll help you walk through this thing as to now say, okay, I believe this is the same voice that I'm hearing. You have what's called the inward witness and the inward voice. The inward witness is that prompting on the inside. It's like a knowing that you're supposed to do something and you feel a peace, you feel a drawing to do a particular thing. It's like, man, this thing is just keep coming to me. It's like, it just won't leave me alone. I got to do this. And then you have the more the voice of God, the inward voice. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's more authoritative when he commands you and tells you, go do this. And you hear it. When I say hear it on the inside, sometimes it can sound like an audible voice. You know, but I don't want you listening for voices all the time. But I want you to be open to receive. If he speaks that way, then do it. The primary way is through the word. There's some things, some principles of the word you can just walk in because the word says to do it. Now, there are some things that the Holy Spirit is going to have to help guide you and give you interpretation and understanding of how to apply what it is you're reading and how to walk it out and live it out. And you're like, man, that's a lot to do. Hey, this is why we have training and teaching. This is why it's important to teach, important to demonstrate, important you know, to go over these things sometimes over and over again so that you can become proficient in it. Okay? Everybody has, God has a plan for everybody and he has, he's given everybody purpose. And so he wants your calling and election to be sure. He wants you to be confident in it. He wants you to be bold in it and he wants you solid in it. Amen. Well, guys, at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. Um, there's some information that'll be coming up on your screen as to different ways you can sow and you can give and whatever God lays on your heart to do, do it. Praise God. Well, y'all, whew. Man, I felt like I just poured out. <laughs> Amen. That was, I believe that was wisdom. I believe it was by the Spirit of God to help and to assist you. Now just begin to walk it out in the name of Jesus. Okay? Well, as you sow and as you give, we pray for a hundredfold return of everything that you're sowing, everything that you're planting. We're in agreement with you right now in the name of Jesus for you to walk in debt freedom, debt cancellations. We declare right now for increased supernatural increase. We declare witty inventions, ideas, concepts, new businesses, new jobs, new open doors that no man can shut. We declare, we declare that you will begin to see the fruit of your labor and that God will give you wise, wisdom to work, wise work. Glory to God, wise work, wisdom to work, wisdom to put your hand to do something, wisdom to assist you in this, in this endeavor. Praise God. All right. Well, guys, love you so much. We appreciate you so much. Not a time, certainly not out of message, but we at Spirit of Fire, we are changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. God bless you all. Have a great night. We'll see you next time. Peace.